my love here I stand before you I am yours now from this moment on take my hand only can stop me shaking We'll share forever This I promise you And when I look in your eyes All of my life is before me I'll give you my love completely My darling This I promise you My love I can feel your heart beat As we dance now Closer than before Don't let go Don't let go Cause I could almost cry now We'll share forever this vow to you and when I look in your eyes all of my life is before me and I I'll give you my love completely My darling This I promise you My darling This I promise you
Give her a hug, give her a kiss. Yeah. I'll get one either side, don't get her on the other side. Oh, yeah. Smile, that's lovely. Oh, 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 Get the right, I'll spin it round a bit. Helen, Just put a bit Helen, more in Helen. Sophie's for us. Oh, is that going to be Can I have a look at the video? Can you sit me? Mum's got it? Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. 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 Okay, open.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my few a very warm welcome to the Dovergood Hall Hotel on this very happy and special occasion for James and Sophie. The vows they make today, they are pledging themselves to each other for the years ahead, believing that whatever life may hold for them, they will share through the strength that their marriage will bring. James and Sophie, today you will exchange vows that will unite you as husband and wife. The words are a formal and public pledge of your love and a promise of lifelong commitment to each other. The place in which we are now met has been duly sanctioned according to law for the celebration of marriage. If any person knows of any legal reason why James and Sophie may not be joined in matrimony, you should declare it now. James and Sophie, before you pledge yourselves in marriage, it is my duty to remind you of the solemn and lasting character of the vows you are about to make to each other. Marriage, according to the law of this country, is the union of two people voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of all others. I'm now going to ask each of you to declare that you do not know of any legal reasons why you should not be married to each other. James, if you can repeat the words of the declaration after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not. That I know not. Of any lawful impediment. That I of any of any lawful impediment. Why I, James Moore. Why I, James Moore. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Sophie Marie Robinson. To Sophie Marie Robinson. Daddy, I, do I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not. That I know not of any lawful impediment. Of any of yeah. any lawful <laughs> impediment. <laughs> of any lawful impediment. Why I, Sophie Marie Robinson. Why I, Sophie Marie Robinson. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To James Moore. To James Moore. <coughs> well done. You can both have a little bit of a breather now because we're going to have our first reading. I'm going to ask Debbie if you would come forward and do the first reading for us, please. When you marry her, love her. After you marry her, study her. When she is blue, cheer her. When she is talkative, by all means listen to her. If she dresses well, compliment her. When she is cross, humour her. If she is jealous, cure her. If she is lonely, comfort her. When she looks pretty, tell her so. Let her feel you understand her, but never let her know she isn't boss. When you marry him, love him. After you marry him, study him. If he is secretive, trust him. If he is sad, cheer him. When he is talkative, listen to him. When he is quarrelsome, ignore him. If he is jealous, cure him. If he cares not for pleasure, coax him. If he favours society, accompany him. When he deserves it, kiss him. Let him think you understand him, but never let him know. You manage him. <laughs> the purpose of marriage is that you may always love, care for and support each other through all the joys and sorrows of life and that love may be fulfilled in a relationship of permanent and continuing commitment. We trust these things will come true for you both. It is also about two people. <coughs> it is a promise from each of you to always treat one another with respect and affection and to never forget that your marriage is a continuing celebration of the love that you have today. Marriage entered into freely, voluntarily and with the full and unreserved consent of you both. Therefore, James, do you take Sophie to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. Sophie, do you take James to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. I call upon these persons here present to witness, to witness that I, James Moore, that I, James Moore, do take thee, <laughs> do take thee Sophie Marie Robinson, Sophie Marie Robinson, to be my lawful wedded wife, to be my lawful wedded wife. All that I have, all that I have, I give to you. I give to you. All that I am, all that I am, I share with you. I share with you. I promise, I promise to give you my love and to give, friendship. To give you my love and friendship. To confide in you. To confide in you. And comfort you. And comfort you. To trust and support you. To trust and support you. I promise to be there. I promise to be there. When you need me most. When you need me most. Always and forever. Always and forever. 
present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness. To witness. That I, Sophie Marie Robinson. That I, Sophie Marie Robinson. Do take thee. Do take thee. James Moore. James Moore. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. All that I have, all that I have, I give to you. I give to you. All that I am, all that I am, I share with you. I share with you. I promise, I promise to give you my love and friendship. To give you my love and friendship. To confide in you. To confide in you. And comfort you. And comfort you. To trust and support you. To trust and support you. I promise to be there. I promise to be there when you need me most. You need me most. Always and forever. Always and forever. We've now come to the exchange of rings, which is the traditional and ancient way of sealing the contract that you have made and has an important significance in a relationship as it is a circle without beginning or end. It also symbolises an ending and everlasting love and is the outward sign of the lifelong promises that you're making to one another. I'm therefore going to ask Matt if you would step forward with the rings, please. Okay, James, if you can take some of this one first. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. In the presence of our family and friends. In the presence of our family and friends. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. And as a symbol of our marriage. And a symbol of our marriage. Thank you. Okay, if you can take James as well. Thank you. If you'd like to retake your seat. If you can repeat after me, Sophie. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. In the presence of our family and friends. <laughs> In the presence of our family and friends. As a token of my love. As a token of my love, as a symbol of family. We've now come to our final reading. Uh, Bev, if I could ask you to step forward um, and do the reading for us, please. <laughs> Today is a day you will always remember, the greatest in anyone's life. You'll start off the day just two people in love, and you'll end it as husband and wife. It's a brand new beginning, the start of a journey, with moments to cherish and cherish and treasure. Until then, there will be times when you both disagree, these will surely be outweighed by pleasure. You will have heard many words of advice in the past, when the secrets of marriage were spoken, but you know that the answers lie hidden inside where that bond of true love lies unbroken. So be happy forever as lovers and friends, it's the dream of a new life for you. <coughs> As you stand there together with love in your eyes from the moment you whisper, I do. And with luck, all your hopes and your dreams can be real. May success find its way to your hearts. Tomorrow can bring you the greatest of joys, but today is the day it all starts. Thank you. A day filled with happiness and love. We also hope that the feelings of love that you have for each other will deepen and grow stronger throughout the years to come. James and Sophie, you have today made declarations required by law in the presence of your witnesses, family and friends, and you've made your own solemn promises to each other. May you always love, honour and cherish one another. May no failure or misfortune ever part you, and may you live full and rich lives together. It is now my very great pleasure to be able to say you are husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. We've come to the part in the ceremony where I pass over to Nikki. She's going to be dealing with the signing of our official register. I'd ask you to continue not to take any video or photographs whilst we're signing our official register, and then we'll put a mock register out and you'll be able to take some photographs then. I think we'll probably have a bit more music uh, whilst we're doing that. Okay, now you can smile. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. 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 I think he's there, is he?
So let's get video and I'm oh, sorry about that. <laughs> We're photographs in place. Are you ready for mine? Yeah. Well done, Dom. Absolutely. And you too, Dom. Has it gone how you want? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. I don't know. Hey now! We've got boy one then. We're coming back to you. Oh, okay. Oh. That was a big fight, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're smiling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been really good, yeah. Well, 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 thank you very much, Paul. I will do. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, no. <laughs> We're all sold, them off. Sweetie. <laughs> Table one, table one, table one, table one. Could be that. Sweetie, sweetie. Oh, sweetie. Thank you, thank you for coming. Oh, kissing. Yeah? Oh, kissing. Oh, kissed out now. She won't want to kiss me tonight now. Yeah. Oh, no. Bye. 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 I was going to fish more I'm not with you. You're there now. Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. I'm going to go. You're Thank you. Hey, beautiful. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Might be red here. Oh, no. You missed it. Okay. Come on. Are you going to keep your hand in? Yeah. Thank you. All best, bro. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>
Thank Roman you. here. Thank you very much. Hi, Guardian here. Yeah, yeah, Daddy. Now we'll have the usual Saturday afternoon fight with the Bright's dress. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. How are you on that? Are you good? Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to call upon the bride's father to start the, start the formalities. Dad. And I must admit, ladies and gentlemen, after that lovely meal, I'm quite stuffed. <laughs> and I, I could really do with a sit down and lie down. So what I think I'll do, I'll just pass on my speech and I'll get straight over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sophie's dad. In the past, I've been called many different names, including Stuart. But today, for one very proud day, I have a new name. Today, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Father of the Bride. As Father of the Bride, I have the privilege of making the first speech. Privilege and an advantage. I say advantage because it gives me, because sorry, because it means that I get first go at using all the jokes and the one-liners that Matt and Jim was going to nick off the internet. So if you see either of them change a slightly different pale shade or writing down something on their notes, you know, I've used something that they intended to use themselves. <laughs> so, unlucky lads, I'm afraid about that one. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I would like to thank you all for coming today, especially those of you who knew I was going to say a few words. <laughs> I feel really touched that you're still bothered to attend this day. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of myself, Sophie's mum Bev, and Jim's parents Debbie and Keith, we would like to extend you a very warm welcome to the celebration of the marriage of Sophie and Jim. As you all know, a wedding is a celebration of two people making a commitment to each other, surrounded by their family and their friends. And it is also a time that you wish anybody that you have ever loved could have been here to witness this very special occasion. So, on a sadder note, but with very happy memories, it would be nice of us all to remember our family members that unfortunately are no longer with us here today to witness the wedding of Sophie and Jim. They are always in our thoughts, and we dearly wish they could have been here. <laughs> so before I continue, could I ask you all just to please stand and drink a toast to absent friends. Where are they going now? Absent friends. Absent friends. Thank you. <coughs> As a father, one of the proudest moments in your life is when you walk your daughter down the aisle to start the next chapter of her life. Very proud and very emotional. And for those of you who know me, I would like to think you think I'm a quite generous person. Get the <laughs> But giving Sophie away today wasn't easy. I know everyone will agree with me when I say, Sophie, 
You look absolutely gorgeous today. Yeah. And you like yeah. And you make not just me, but all of your family and friends very happy to see you so radiant. Including Carol. Including Carol. So today, Sophie, as I have said, as I have said, you look gorgeous. But growing up, you've tried somewhat to alter your looks and have picked up a few battle scars on the road. I do remember when you were just a few months old, you rolled out of bed and landed on top of a three-pin plug that left an impression on your forehead for many years. Yeah. And just as those scars were fading, you decided to put some more next to them when you had a fight with a pogo stick and ended up losing. A couple of stitches in your leg after jumping on a broken mirror was then closely followed by when you thought you was king of the swingers in the trees and probably fell off breaking both of her wrists. But Sophie, through all of these little accidents, you are still the beautiful girl you were when I first held you in my arms on the 29th of November, 1990. Oh. And the overwhelming love I had for you then has never gone away. And my feelings for you now are still as strong as they were then. Sophie, you are already a fantastic mum to your stunning daughters, Mia and Maisie. And I know you will be a wonderful, loving wife to Jim. Sophie, I'm so very proud to call you my daughter. As all of you here know, Sophie does like the simple things in life. So this seems a perfect opportunity for me to welcome Sophie's husband, Jim, to the family. <laughs> During the time I've known Jim, I've come to realise how very special he is to Sophie and how much he cares for her. And as their relationship grew and their family extended with the birth of their daughters Mia and Maisie, Jim showed what a fantastic father he is. I really don't think I could have chosen a better husband for my daughter. Oh. Now Jim, or the exorcist, as I like to call him. <laughs> every time I go to a public house of him, he clears the rooms of all the spirits. <laughs> I know Jim likes me. In fact... He didn't tell me that. No, in fact, I know Jim loves me. Because he told me so once, on a recent trip to Benidorm. <laughs> it was after he had consumed quite a number of uh, points of stronger, followed by, shall we say, the odd shot or ten. <laughs> On our return to the hotel, he decided he wanted to show us how good he was at backwards somersaults into the swimming pool. Do <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> I do believe the somersaulting did help him to vomit up all the alcohol and a large Big Mac right next to my sunbeam. <laughs> So, after spending the next quarter of an hour or so, cleaning all of his sick up, and setting him down, setting him down on his sunbed, he gazed up at me, through squinted eyes, and said, Thanks, Stu, I bloody love you. <laughs> and then he promptly comes out. <laughs> Jim, you are clearly a man of vision. Occasionally blurred, sometimes double, but nonetheless a man of vision who has been lucky enough to find my daughter. So it's a pleasure to welcome you to our family. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, I'm apparently required to give the happy couple some advice on their marriage. <laughs> Sophie, I'm going to do that. Sophie, Jim, you've gone and beaten me and gone down the hole before me. So maybe I should ask you for your advice. <laughs> However, I shall share this with you. A successful marriage 
requires falling in love several times, but always with the same person. <laughs> love is not perfect, it's not a fairy tale, and doesn't always come easy. Love is overcoming obstacles, facing challenges, holding on, and never letting go. Love is a short word. Lost me place. <laughs> love is a short word. Easy to smell, spell, but difficult to define and impossible to live without. Love is hard work, but most of all, love is realising that every hour, every minute, and every second, it is worth it because you did it together. Always make time for one another and remind yourselves when things get difficult and the housework, the mortgage, the kids, the job, and the money all become more important. Remember, before all that, there were just two people, Sophie and Jim. And without you, none of the other things matter. Jim, make the most of your honeymoon period. If you don't know when this is, it's the time between, and Sophie says, I do, and you should. <laughs> oh, never go to bed in an argument. Always stop up and fight like yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a beautiful bride and a handsome groom. Please be upstanding and join me in a toast to Mr. <coughs> and Mrs. Moore. Mr. and Mrs. Moore. Thank you. you've ever had to sit through. Seven minutes! I'm bored already. Also I've heard that the pollen count today is more than double the average and I seem to have been suffering with hay fever a lot today so you might have to bear with me. Thank you. First of all I want to take this opportunity to thank Stu not only for his lovely words but also allowing me to marry his beautiful daughter. I will make it my long life ambition to keep her as happy as I possibly can. I'd like to thank both of our mums for saying words in our ceremony. It means so much of us. Don't worry, Dad, I haven't left you well. I'd like to thank you in advance from Sophie, myself and all our guests here, as I heard you telling Amy that the first round was on you. <laughs> to all our family and friends, thanks for coming and sharing our special day. Some have travelled for many miles to be here, so on behalf of me and my new wife, I'd like to thank you all so much. Can you say that bit again? Me and my wife. Me and my wife. Oh, <laughs> Bevin like Stu, where do I start? I'll start by saying thank you. If Mira or Maisie come home at 14 and said they'd met a boy called Jack, I would have been like, ha, oh, my dead body. <laughs> Look, luckily for me, you did You've seen me for me. A little boy that loved the Black Forest Gatto. <laughs> After a few jokes off Bev and Darren about having jam on toast for tea, the months turned into years and I couldn't hope for a better family to have married into. I thank you both for accepting me into your precious daughter's life and welcoming me to both arms. But mostly, I thank you for bringing up the girl the way you are. I love you. Now to my right. My mum and dad, what can I say? Literally mum, can I say anything without ruining your mate? <laughs> you guys have always been there to help me when I've needed it, and I couldn't be any prouder to be your son. It doesn't get said as much as it should, but I love you both. So on behalf of my wife, I would like to thank you for making me so amazing. <laughs> Darren, Scott and Ed. I couldn't have asked for three better blokes to stand next to me today. 
not only to make me look a whole lot better, but maybe for when I need holding up later. <laughs> you all have a special place in my mind for everything you've all done for me over the years. So thank you boys, it means a lot to both of us. someone else she can moan at, took some of the pressure off my nodding and agreeing for me. until she gave in to my persuasive nature. <laughs> but mostly I feel my little chubby face. <laughs> Writing this part of the, of the speech should have been the easiest, but I found it the hardest. I've had so many good times, which ones can I pick to tell everyone? I soon found out most of our memories are not family friendly, friendly so I chose to keep them to myself. <laughs> After school, we turned into adults. By this, I mean you couldn't smash up any more fences after drinking too much of Darren Zuzo and getting the <laughs> we, 
We went to college. Well, when I say we, I mean I doubled for a couple of weeks and then got a job. The surf got booked and stopped for the next three years. And me being the supportive boyfriend that I am, there was a couple of times that I went over, put a face short and have my nails painted. <laughs> After so finished the course, she couldn't wait to get to work, but this didn't last as long as we first Im imagined, as along came our first little piggy, followed by our second piggy a couple of years later. Seeing you become a mother with the care and love bursting at the seams makes me so proud of you. I'm so happy that you are now my wife. Nothing is ever too much for you. You go above and beyond to make me and the girls happy. If they turn into half the woman you are, then we haven't done a bad job. The passion for your trade never went and you couldn't wait to get back. Then the opportunity came that she needed, but so did the spark in the right. It's made me so proud of you, babe, and you're the only, and the only way you can go now is on. So can we all please stand and raise a glass to my hero, my soulmate, my wife. So because I am a man of few friends, but the only bloke that has been there for me through thick and thin, so the duty fell to Matt. The only main thing that I needed Matt to do was to help me sort out stag do. Now with me, on the, me and Matt on the case, it should be easy right? Wrong. About seven failed attempts of looking and eventually giving up and having a beer, made way for Sophie to come to the rescue and help us along the way. Matt insisted that he was paying for me, and for that mate I will be eternally grateful. Just hope when the day comes, your best man is as generous. Don't be to black for you. <laughs> so we went to Benidorm, and what a time we had, so I've been told anyway. <laughs> Matt is the kind of guy that loves a party, so he fitted right in, and not just of his Spanish appearance. <laughs> I know Matt has been worried about the next part of being my best man, for a bloke who is ultra confident on Friday night, it seemed bizarre, he wasn't looking forward to public speaking. As I'm sure most of the times we go out, you end up on a podium, swinging your arms and legs without your top on. <laughs> You've always been there when I've needed you over the last ten years or so. We went from friends to brothers, which was so good for me, as you're allowed to annoy your brother without any repercussions, and that right aim. <laughs> But your friendship with my wife is brilliant. It's not very often this happens. So to both of you, thanks, because it's made my life a whole lot easier. The love and care that you show my kids is amazing. They adore you and they always get excited when you come to our house. I appreciate everything you've done for me, Sophie, me and Maisie. I love you, bro. I gave Matt his present this morning, but, budging, but judging by his eyes, it seems the bottle of Russian Standard hasn't touched the side. <laughs> Gone, mate. <laughs> don't worry mate, I'm done now. So on that bombshell, I'd like you and like to hand you over to my best man. Now this is the worst part of the day for me, the speech. I've been dreading this moment since the day I found out I was going to be the best man while I shoot because you ain't got no open friends. <laughs> um, <coughs> now it's time to my, I just want to get it done as quickly as I can because I want to get very, very drunk. I just want, I just want to get it over and done with, to be honest. She will agree, your Lord agree, today's ceremony was beautiful. And it was such a pleasure to watch two of my best friends finally get married after all these years. And it's a true honour to be your best best man and share this special day with you. Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> oh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, come on. Oh, man. That was good for me, eh? Give me a drink. Right. I'm now going to turn my attention to you, mate. 
Don't worry, I can already see you starting to sweat. Me and Jim go way back. We first met in high school. Well, although the first three years we wasn't best mates, I was good. Well, that's because I was cool and my Jim wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I used to see Jim walking to school and I remember thinking, who's that tall, milky bar looking kid with that boy backpack? But as time went on, I used to see him on, the, on this weird bus driving up towards the car and I used to think, who's that? Poor weird looking kid with boy backpack. What's he doing on that bus? Yeah. In year nine, me and Jim got put in the same history class, which is when we first started to bond. One day he threw a paddy, Mr. Ferguson. He chucked his books down and walked out of the classroom, and that was the moment I thought, I like this kid. <laughs> He's not such a geek after all. He still throws them paddies now, pretty much every day, to be honest. So, um, Jim then turned into a cool kid with a little help from Sophie. He was soon walking around with a loose tie, shirt hanging out, backpack lowered, rock forwards on and a burgas coat. <laughs> I'd see them both out on a Friday night, Sophie with a three litre bottle of cider and a bottle of uh, 22 and then Jim with a one litre bottle of cider and he was eating. <laughs> <laughs> he was absolutely smashed. The time our relationship really started to blossom is when we found out we both shared a lot of cars Little chubby pinked up cars with big exhaust. <laughs> Jim had a little pinked up punto that looked like something out of a Kinder Egg. <laughs> Which I later on bought, I think. <laughs> and I pinked it up a little more so it looked like something out of a Transformers movie. <laughs> um, we used to drive around thinking with the coolest kids in town. We would, we would have to stop and drive sideways over speed bumps, peeing everyone off behind us. Looking back now, we wasn't cool. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Me and Jim have always had each other's backs, apart from the time he upset a girl in the kebab shop. <laughs> you know I'm going there. Yeah. Um, yeah, kebab shop. By calling her a nasty word, she thought I'd said it and came at me with a massive stiletto. <laughs> Jim just sat there eating his kebab and watched. <laughs> and watched watched as this rough scouser bird <laughs> laid into me with, a, with, with, a, with all the shoes on like, uh, and I mean she bashed me. I really did take really it on the chin for that. I took a shoe in for you. Yeah, what did she get? My shirt. <laughs> you took oh yeah, she, got, she did get my kebab in the face to me. I did <laughs> laugh my kebab in the face. <laughs> yeah, don't lose me again, come on. <laughs> But one night he did, he, he did do me right in Stafford. Do you remember Stafford too? <laughs> when he thought a lad was starting on me in the fag area. But he wasn't. The poor lad was just drunk and he, he, he stumbled upon me. <laughs> Jim comes bowling over like a bull in the china shop thinking, like, oh, I'm going to look after him that time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's just say he ended up looking like the elephant that man. You know what I mean, bad. He got battered out. <laughs> All I remember is Sophie saying, oh, in the kebab shop after this, oh, Jan, you look really ugly. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was all sort of to be fair. <laughs> Since these young days, I've had the pleasure of sharing nights out, holidays, family trips and events with Jan and Sophie. And I've become not just close to them, but to their beautiful daughters too, who I, who I do. Shit. <laughs> very much. That was hard for me. <laughs> so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you. Both of you for enhancing my life and showing me what a true friendship really is. Both of you also have beautiful families who I'm also very close to. Especially you, Pat, wherever you are. Oi, oi. I'll see you in room 111 later. <laughs> you know it. He said that to me, Pat, as well. <laughs> I've said it to five people. <laughs> right, here we go then. I know all this is a little bit soppy to me, but I have struggled to, to rip into my best mate because he doesn't do anything wrong. He, he's, he's not funny. What? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't do anything wrong or even funny. He's Mr. Perfect and, he, and he's the best friend I could ever wish for. Apart from when he gets drunk, he's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and he swims by you. Only me and him together. And Mike. Um, and Mike. Mike, where are you? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you put, most of you probably really just jump in, but it's not, it's not, it's not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's now time we spoke about the stag do. Here we go, it's going to be bad, guys. <laughs> I know you've all eaten, so like, be careful. 
First of all, I'd like to thank all the lads that came to Benidorm and made an absolute class weekend. I, I think I enjoyed it a little bit too much, to be honest. It all started off calm and sophisticated. Jesus, I can't believe I said that. Sophisticated. <laughs> um, well, until we, left the, until we left the airport. Oh, I'd also like to thank Sophie for coming to the stag do as Jim is on FaceTime to every 10 minutes. So you might as well. <laughs> That was in Paris. Every 10 minutes he was on the phone, so it's just cringy. Even he? Guilty conscience, I'm sorry. What? What? Matthew? Right, <laughs> <Boy, laughs> no, no, it was a stag do, and there are kids present, so I'm going to keep it clean. We were like mine in Jim's room, which to be fair was an absolute joke. <laughs> he made the brothel look like a five star hotel. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> and this was before Jim. Oh, here we go. This is. I'm going to feel the same. God. And this was before Jim walked in on me having a poo. <laughs> uh, and said, Matt, I need a poo too. <laughs> I'm going to poo in the big guy next to you. <laughs> oh dear. I'm like, yes, I might go for it. I'm pissed up, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm like, yeah, go for it. I'm absolutely drunk, so yeah, I'm just like <laughs> Next thing I know, the lads had two, <laughs> two big uns in the bee guy next to me. Exactly. And they are big and smell, though. <laughs> and I'll clock them. I'll clock them. So now I run out, pants down my ankles, straight to the balcony for some fresh air. Next thing I know, he's, he's come out with one of his poos in his hand. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Jim. <laughs> Did all right? I must be drunk. <laughs> Next thing I know, he's come out with one of his poos in his hand. Um, yeah, Mike, Mike there, crying, crying well, with laughter next to him. And he's, next thing I know, he's, 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 he's through this poo off the 30th floor. Oh, let it go <laughs> I didn't have the give Betty soup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not in there, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to be there to see it. Just <laughs> it. Right. <laughs> now, with Jim and, 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 and Mike both crying with laughter, me on the other hand, didn't find it so funny. As I'm lying on the balcony floor, being sick from what I just witnessed. You <laughs> vile, you vile man. <laughs> I suspect they closed the hotel down after, hotel down after that, to be fair. <laughs> Apart from that, we had a great time drinking. I'm still shaking. Apart from that, we had a great time drinking, dancing, drinking, live sex shows, um, <laughs> brothels, prostitutes, <laughs> joke, joke, joke. <laughs> for, for jam anyway, I did it all. <laughs> uh, water sports, falling out flip flops, which uh, thank you for you for helping me and you. <laughs> Bad night, strong word. Don't from, uh, drinking uh, a little bit more. Mm, we won't talk about that. Um, does anyone like baseball in the room? Jim does. Jim does baseball. Especially when it's very, very wet. You don't know what we're about. No. Oh, don't remember the baseball bat. Oh. 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 Yes, yeah, so Jim, Jim loved the baseball. We won't talk about that though, because. Obviously, he was getting room, he was a bit naughty to be honest. Um, but let's talk about the time where, where she did pull your pants down and the whole club went quiet from catching a tiny glimpse of this small shriveled up queen. And I, it, it was bad, guys. It, it, it was cold, though, to be fair. So if it was warm, you would have blown to death. Of course, it would. But it was cold. Embarrassing. Uh, well, I'm not. Sorry, sorry. I'm swaying through it, everyone. Ed, 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 Ed. <laughs> Certainly made up for missing the first stag dude, didn't you? Yeah, Ed absolutely battered on the second stag dude. Thank you, Ed. Yes. Don't, don't mix with him like that. Uh, yeah, he's good, yeah, he's good. Uh, no.
Roll it. God help us out. Roll it. Come to it. Roll it. Let's round it up. Do you the years you have truly, or have truly grown to love and respect you and thank you so much for being there for me every day to make me laugh and smile. It now gives me great pleasure to ask you all to raise a glass to, and wish Sophie and Jan, <coughs> James and Sophie a very happy and healthy future together to Sophie and, and Jan and uh, Jan. <laughs>
Memories that flood my mind of the little girl I know Once upon a time you held my hand so tight you Close your eyes and say a prayer then I'd kiss your head goodnight because I wouldn't picture two other people together, yeah. to be fair. It's been a great day, way better than I expected. And that sounds bad, but I don't know, it's been brilliant. It does sound bad. It does sound bad. <laughs> it does sound bad, but it's what... It's been brilliant. I've it been, it I've has been amazing. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself. You're it's expecting been, it to be good, but it's just been a lot better. It's been Yeah, 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 good. I expect it to be good. But like I say, February wedding, it's in the forecast, I was like, oh shit. Pictures, everyone else, but yeah. it's absolutely thrown it down it, so I know. So, but it's been throwing it down, but you've made cracking it down, mate. the best absolutely of the situation. So, it's been amazing. I know if you're anything like me and Jim's done absolutely cool like I did, you've done a stellar job because it's been brilliant. Yeah, the food's been awesome, the people have been awesome, bar staff. Yeah, the magician, OMG, the magician, magician was amazing. Blow my mind. He's followed mind. him around for the whole night, 
Bought him drinks, everything. One drink. Loves him. Well, one drink. So uh, we're gonna follow him on on Facebook. That Snapchat thing you did was amazing. Yeah, brilliant. One of him. You literally that, so. like topped it, and brilliant. I literally couldn't. You were more, way more organised than what we were. What you were. I were, yeah. <laughs> and you've just literally done absolutely amazing, and I cannot fault anything that you've done. No. So well done. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And. All that needs to be said is. Unfortunately, now you're more. Congratulations, <laughs> you're more. I have, I have lost more status, and you have gained more status. Don't know congratulations, Mors. Love you lots. I just want to say congratulations to my sister and my new brother-in-law. Um, today has been absolutely amazing. Um, I hope you both have a fabulous life together. And thank you for making me maid of honour because I've done a brilliant bloody job. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to my new sister-in-law and brother-in-law. Hope you have a happy life together, he's meant to say. Hi Sophie and Jim. You've done Nan proud again. You looked absolutely beautiful Sophie. I wish you both happy happiness health and especially good health. I love you all lots. Take care. Bye. Oh James and Sophie, lovely day. You both look lovely. Um, all the best. best wishes to you both and the children. Love you all. Bye. <laughs> Of course, of course, eh? That's absolutely Hello, James, Sophie, lovely day. Love you all to beats. Oh, you said that. Great day, all the best in the future, and great happiness. Love you. you. Love you too. And the girls. Yeah. Beautiful day. Bye bye. Love you. Nana. Congratulations to you both, Sophie, you look absolutely stunning. To my gorgeous daughter and my fantastic son-in-law, you've both made me very, very proud today. I love the way you love each other and I love the way how you look after your kids. You are a perfect family and you make your father and your father-in-law a very, very happy person. Thank you for an absolutely fantastic day today. Thanks for putting me on the spotlight first yet again, but I don't do too bad. And I wish you all the very, very best happiness for the future of your lives. All the very, very best. I love you both. And Jim, I know you love me. <laughs> Hi, so. Hi, uh, new son-in-law. I've had a fabulous day. You've all looked amazing. Sophie, you've done really well. All that stress, no sleep for us last night. What was that all about? I bet you wished you'd gone to sleep now. I hope you have really enjoyed the day. You're going to enjoy the rest of the night. You can have a good night's sleep tonight because I've got the kids. And hopefully they're going to sleep for me because I'm knackered. I love you both. <laughs> And I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> yeah, Jim. Day's been amazing. You're amazing. You just take care of her, mate. And Soph, I couldn't be more proud of you if you was one of my own. It's just been fantastic. Thank you. And I appreciate all the sentiment of you both. Sophie, what a day. Couldn't change anything for the world. What beautiful you looked when I first seen you. Not my socks off. And what a day we've had throughout. Everyone's been here, everyone's laughed, everyone's smiled. There's nothing that anybody could change. I just want you to know that I love you and I always will. And a perfect day for a perfect couple. I love you. Where do I start? I absolutely adore you. You're the man of my dreams. I've had an absolutely fantastic day. You've supported me through absolutely everything. You're my rock. 
You mean the world to me. You're a fantastic dad. You're going to be a fantastic husband to me. And I just love you so much. Thank you for absolutely everything. I just can't put it into words. I just love you.